It is update day for DaVinci Resolve, and we're going to talk about it. DaVinci Resolve 18.6.3 is out today. Now, this isn't a major release. It is mostly bug fixes, but still worth talking about it. And, you know, some people want to watch that video instead of reading through the patch notes, which we are about to do, but just in video. But I know that's not the most exciting thing, but you know what is a pretty exciting? I think the dozens of plugins and presets that I've made for DaVinci Resolve, many of which are free, that you can all check out over at sterlingsupply.co, including my most recent preset pack, which is all drag and drop graphs and charts for DaVinci Resolve. That's pretty cool. Check that out uh, if you're not down with bug fixes. But hey, if you need bug fixes, they're very important. So let's talk about it. You might have gotten a pop-up that the update was ready, but if not, or you dismissed that and uh, you want to come back to it later, you can always come to DaVinci Resolve, check for updates. That'll show you what's available and you can click download. Alternatively, you can also go to the support page for the main Blackmagic Design website, uh, where you will see here the latest downloads of Resolve 18.6.3, both free and studio. And as I've said before, this backlog goes all the way back years and years if for any reason you do need to roll back. And that is a very good opportunity to talk a little bit about updating very, very quickly, very, very quickly. But for people who need this, it's important. I tend to jump on new updates because they're exciting and sometimes I talk about them in videos like this. But as we've seen in the initial launch of 18.6, that isn't always the best idea for everyone and you should no, if you're one of those people. Updates can introduce new bugs, and if you are especially in the middle of a big project, it's generally smart not to jump on those updates right away. And that's why it's always important to properly uh, back up your projects and your databases before any update, so that if you need to, you can come back to the support page, grab a previous version of Resolve, and get up and running uh, with the least amount of issues as possible. My download was complete, so you know I'm unzipping, I'm gonna install that. But on this uh, latest download tab, uh, under Studio, uh, I'm gonna click Read More, and we're gonna check out what's in this update. Like I said, uh, lots of bug fixes and that sort of deal. Nothing too exciting, but hey, it's new. Let's check it out. Going down the list, support for syncing media from network folders for cloud projects. I wasn't aware this was a limitation, but it's very, very cool. I wasn't even aware this was a limitation, uh, but it does make a lot of sense with what Blackmagic is doing, like with their like cloud pod and like cloud store hardware, since that is all network attack storage. We also have an option to prevent sleep when uploading files or generating proxy for cloud. That should speak for itself. Uh, if your computer's working, you don't want it to go to sleep. You also have a configuration dialog when importing projects to a cloud project library. This might be the issue I saw the most amount of people talking about, uh, not necessarily the dialogue, but you know, dragging in existing projects to turn those into cloud projects. Looks like that has been smoothed over a whole lot, which is great. We also have cloud projects with no media sync. Now use proxy settings in preferences. And one that might impact a lot of people, deliver settings option to use proxy media for web presets. I am assuming uh, this includes the uh, black magic, what's it called, the cloud presentations. A fair amount of people talked about how you couldn't uh, export using proxy media for those. And a lot of times that's just for review, you know, you don't need crazy full quality. So especially when you're exporting a video uh, in that use case, this is super useful. And presumably when you're uploading to like YouTube, which you could use in that same review process as well. We have support for per output audio normalization during renders. Audio normalization uh, was pretty new. That might've actually just been in 16 or 18.6, uh, I think. But now if you are outputting multiple audio channels, you can have run that process on each of those individually, which I would imagine would have some pretty big benefits. As always, uh, there's some stuff in here. I super don't know uh, what to do or what it is, um, but it talks about that ACES support. ACES a CG, um, probably just a flavor of that. A lot of color correcting, not super my world. I also had to look this next one up, support for decoding uh, 422 HEIF and HIF clips. This is some like high efficiency. Uh, I don't know whether it's always 10 bit clips, but uh, you know, some like mobile stuff, like I think iPhones um, can shoot on this specific like high efficiency format. So just, hey, more formats. Always great. We also have the ability to close the current project from the file menu. This is something, uh, you know, you don't run into it often, but if you do, if you ever wanna like close a project or like switch projects and stuff, um, you had to like open a second project to like close the first project you were in. I, I know that making some stuff smoother if you ever need to close your project, but you wanna like stay in resolve, if that makes sense. We have the ability to customize aspect ratio for Dolby Vision exports. I don't know how many different aspect ratios 
for Dolby Vision, probably like different cinematic ones. But hey, cool for people doing that. Uh, more Dolby Vision stuff, improved sort order. For Dolby Vision combo boxes. I don't know what that is, presumably. It's good for Dolby Vision peeps. Improved handling of inactive clients in collaboration projects. I'm pretty interested in this, because as you might know, if you have multiple people in a project, it does lock those bins and lock those timelines. If there's some sort of like timeout process or that, that could be super useful. You know, especially if someone like completely leaves their computer or walks away from their desk and someone else needs to do work. Address an issue with copying projects across cloud libraries, sort of like what we talked about up here. Address an issue changing source folder uh, for clips with proxies. We fixed a windowing issue on Macs with Sonoma 14.1. Address an issue displaying flags on thumbnails of video only media. Addressed restoring active local version when restoring removed media. Oh, that's interesting. We have a fix for image quality issues with scene cut detected interlaced clips. Oh, this is actually pretty cool. Uh, a lot of like those early digital versions of analog media um, are probably prime like examples for the scene cut detection. If you want to like bring in an old recording of like some ripped media that's gone through however many different versions of capturing and recapturing and stuff. There was an issue fixed with opening the take selector on retimed clips. I've never messed with a take selector. I don't do a lot, do a lot of stuff with takes. Uh, but that's great. Address an issue changing speed for unlinked audio in the inspector. And address an issue with deleting transitions with an in-out range in edit. Ooh, and like I previously mentioned, at uh, 18.6, lots of people had issues. Um, I think a fair amount of that was cleaned up with uh, 6.1 and 6.2. But here we have again addressed a performance issue when ripple editing large timelines. That was sort of the big issue in the um, uh, 18.6 release, but it looks like whether this is cleaning that up even more for some people who have lingering issues or, you know, just generally uh, increasing that performance. Uh, I can't super say I didn't run into that, uh, but hey, uh, it's nice that um, even if an issue is mostly resolved, uh, if it's not completely resolved, we, you know, can continue working on it. <laughs> we have an issue with the color picker um, for the uh, 3D keyer. That that hasn't been cleared up. Addressed gaps when Ripple deleting interlaced clips with frame alignment. Uh, addressed multiple tracking and drawing issues for Magic Mask Infusion. I I'll be interested to see if I pick up any of that. Uh, Cause hey, I use Magic Mask Infusion. Um, and this feels uh, like maybe it's something that just felt clunky before, um, but has been cleaned up a bit. I'm, I, I wanna see if I note that. Improved speed for transforming objects with Material X Materials Infusion. I haven't, still haven't dove a ton into USD stuff in Fusion. I want to. Copying grades with mats now prioritizes layer name over index. Again, I don't do a lot of color stuff. Ooh, lots of color stuff uh, to round it out. Incorrect saturation on HDR. Custom curve soft clipping. Power window flicker in dual SDI stereoscopic 3D previews. I, hey, I want to talk about more 3D stuff having no experience with it. I don't know who to talk to about that. Who's doing cool 3D stuff? Like stereo, st stereoscopic 3D. Not like, st that's, this is an aside. But hey, this is something I would love to talk about sometime. Gamut stuff, I don't understand, but hey, if you use Aces ODTs with a P3D65 gamut, you're in luck. Uh, some more uh, HDR fixes. Address an audio sync issue when bouncing audio with voice isolation. I've seen sort of this in playback, not as much bouncing audio. And we addressed an issue with the arrange modifier in the Fairlight timeline. And hey, improved keyword manager layout. This was also pretty recent, I think, in 18.6. I haven't dove a lot into that. And what do you know, general performance and stability improvements. Don't know when my camera died, uh, but that's cool. Uh, to say, hey, uh, it's an update. Uh, grab it if you are in a position to do so. Make sure you back up. Uh, and if uh, specifically any of these uh, seem like they may be great features or fixes for you, you're in luck. And like I said, if you want a whole ton of new features and effects that are not part of an update, uh, hey, I've made those. Uh, those are on the channel. Those are over on the website. Uh, but thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.